Yo, what's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about gear. More specifically, is the Sony Alpha 6500 worth it in 2019? Spoiler alert, it is. So the first reason why we think the Sony A6500 is still worth it in 2019 is that 4K. Man, is it sharp. We have like 34 inch monitors 4K and it looks phenomenal on like even a big screen. It's really good. And we can't believe that this camera actually came out in, in what, in 2017? And it still holds up so well. Like with all these uh, Sony A7 series cameras coming out, I personally I don't find a reason why I would switch. They literally have the same quality when, when it comes to video. Okay, it's full frame, but it's pretty much the same. If I need to name just one issue, it's that it doesn't do 4K 60. I really wish uh, that it could do that and then I would call it a perfect camera. But until then, if there's not a Sony camera who cannot do that, I don't think I need even to switch from this. I love this camera and the 4K is amazing. And especially if you throw on some kind of a really expensive lens like the G Master or especially the Sigma Arc. Even the 1080p looks uh, as 4K, it's like so sharp, it's really good. Let's start off by saying how fast and reliable the autofocus on the Sony Alpha 6500 is. Man, some people say Canon's autofocus is amazing, but Sony is on the level with Canon to be honest with you. I used to do a lot of events and weddings, and I still do weddings here and there, but I used to do them a lot. And believe it or not, 99% of the times I was on autofocus, which is bad. I know, I'm trying to change, but Back then I was on autofocus all of the time and 90% of the times it really did nail the focus even on uh, low light conditions, for example weddings. You know when the couple does the first dance, it's usually lit very poorly and you kind of want to go 1.4 aperture to get that bokeh in the background or to get the image as clean as possible and for that, believe it or not, I was using autofocus. And by the way, I wasn't even using the Sony native lenses, I was using Sigma lenses. For example, the Sigma 16mm 1.4. And I couldn't believe it, the autofocus was really 99% of the times spot on. And the image was very, very sharp. So yeah, I consider the autofocus to be very reliable on this camera. And the third reason is built-in image stabilization. Now this can be a really great tool. Uh, while you're shooting handheld, for example, weddings, you know, you want to use a zoom lens and want to be far from uh, the audience and you just want to zoom in into that shot, uh, you can just use the built-in stabilization, for example. You know, in like new cameras, for example, like Canon, uh, they don't even have that option. So this is a really great option to have on the Sony Alpha 6500. All right, the next reason is that this camera is super tiny. It's tiny. Seriously, if you have a, if you have a sl small lens with it, like the, uh, like a, I don't know, 12 millimeter or 30 millimeter, you can legit fit it in your jacket pocket. I've actually sometimes done that. You can just pull it out and shoot. It's so compact. When you're traveling, it's light as well. It doesn't take a lot of space in your bag. It's just crazy that this camera, this small, can pack such a firepower. Seriously, it's really good. Also, the fact that it's it's not that expensive anymore. It came out in 2017. You can legit get it for maybe $600, $700 used which is actually a really good price. And yeah, I, th I think if you have that money, it's totally worth spending on it. Now, let's talk about the nerdy stuff because come on, everyone loves talking about the profile pictures. So our team basically uses S-Log2 and Cine4. We use Cine4 for low light situations and S-Log2 to get that dynamic range during uh, daylight. A lot of people use PP2, PP3, whatever, but we kind of just stick to PP8 because, well, so far it's given us pretty good results. But the reason why we really like that there are so many profile pictures is because we realize that this camera is very customizable. So let's say you're filming an interview. You don't really want to do a lot of post-production, right? So what you do is you maybe turn off the profile pictures or you just turn down the black level or the sharpness level. It's already going to produce a pretty neat image and you're not going to do a lot of post-production. And as for the S-Log2, that dynamic range. I think it had around 12 stops of dynamic range in S-Log2 and that is mind-blowing. If you want to get that cinematic footage, Ooh, that S-Log2 is gonna help you big time. Another reason is that this camera performs surprisingly well in low light. Not being a full frame camera, not having that large of a sensor, it performs really well. And uh, yeah, sure, it does have a little bit of grain. Yeah, sure, it has a little bit of noise. 
but for some reason we actually love how the grain looks like. It looks super cinematic and uh, you don't want your scenes to be super clean and uh, always. Like if you're going for that cinematic look, many people do in post, they apply some grain on it to look good. So yeah, we really love the low light capability, especially if you uh, combine it with some sort of a uh, wide aperture lens like uh, 1.8, f2, those work really well. The low light is not so good for the pictures. I'm also a photographer, so I don't like how it performs on low light in pictures, but in video, it does its thing. It's amazing. And the last reason is 120 frames per second. Now, if you would compare the Sony to other cameras that are way more expensive, some of the cameras don't even have that feature. So it's actually really, really affordable. And again, if you compare it to other cameras, they might have that feature, but it's actually even lower resolution. While on Sony Alpha 6500, you actually get 1080p with uh, the 120 frames per second. It's not super sharp and it's not that mind blowing, but it's really great to have when you run a really slow mo that shot. So, yeah, 120 FPS is pretty cool.